Hello everyone, welcome to the Krishna Kalyan channel. And uh, before we begin, I would like to mention that today's video will be in English uh, as it is intended for a global audience. So this is Sanjay Kumar and uh, today I'm going to talk about my one of open source project which is Cassandra Workbench. So what is Cassandra Workbench? It is similar to the PHP MyAdmin and why I'm taking the name of PHP MyAdmin because uh, mostly most of the developer they are encountered with the PHP MyAdmin correct so whatever you can do there right creating table and select insert delete all kind of cut operation same thing you can perform here as well okay so this is about the Cassandra workbench now we are talk about uh, why I have developed this application okay so before that uh, let's talk about Cassandra what is Cassandra Cassandra is no Cassandra is no SQL distributed database which is highly scalable and uh, which is pretty much fast and nowadays many companies like Netflix and uh, very John 7 uh, 11 and many more companies they are using Cassandra because it's uh, very reliable and uh, robust I can say okay so this is about Cassandra and uh, how Cassandra came so Facebook started uh, Facebook initially started working on Cassandra later uh, uh, it became a open source Apache Cassandra then data stacks uh, started working on this Cassandra open source Cassandra version and now they have their two kind of version one is open source and one is enterprise ed edition from the data stacks actually so this application I develop on top of the open source data stacks Cassandra actually okay so so now the question is that uh, so there is no uh, so why I have developed so is there no any other tools available in the market for uh, the same thing which I am doing here so answer of that yes it is okay so both are from the data stacks only one is dev center and one is like data stacks studio so there are few problems I found actually while working with this application because past few uh, years uh, past four to five years I have been working on Cassandra so I I have found some kind of drawbacks here so first thing like uh, with the dev center okay so dev center it is okay for Windows but you cannot install in uh, Linux actually okay and uh, for Mac also you will face the same issue with data stack studio it is fine but it is pretty much confusing actually okay so this was the issue and there are multiple reason actually you cannot perform the queries like uh, range queries are there okay with the uh, like operator is there right so there are some kind of queries you cannot perform there okay so if some people they work with Cassandra dev center they might aware with this so those things are there okay and third thing like uh, because it was confusing for me while I'm selecting a table I'm uh, I need to do some query uh, suppose a select or delete or any kind of update query I need to go and check about the table details that was little uh, confusing for me not a confusing like it is like a, it is complex structure actually I can say okay so those kind of thing so that was the reason I started working on this application and uh, it is still in a uh, in progress it is not completely developed there are many things I need to uh, implement here. okay so this is about the Cassandra workbench why I have developed let's talk about the application functionality okay so this application uh, code I will put in git and uh, from there you can clone and you can contribute to the, uh, this uh, open source project actually okay so once you will clone into your environment right so there are two things you need to do first thing your Cassandra should be up and running uh, you can see my I because uh, I'm having only one single node cluster actually so this is up and running and second thing this is my code base you can see this is the code structure of this uh, Cassandra work, uh, workbench okay 
so you can see this line number 16 right so in this line number 16 you just need to give your ip address whatever the cassandra ip because uh, if you are working on on-prem or some kind of cloud so then ip address will be changed so those ip address you need to put here okay so these two things you need to first check and then you can just uh, start your application so here i'm using this uh, virtual environment python virtual environment so if you will do this uh, uh, you need to activate it first and then you can start your application okay that's it so once you will start your application so you will see this kind of dashboard you can see this application is running 5160 port okay so you can see this dashboard okay so as soon as your application will load so in the left side you can see the all the key spaces in this section in the key space section okay so here you can see all the by default like uh, which is inbuilt uh, key spaces which comes with uh, cassandra actually by default uh, so those key spaces you can see here okay so one key spaces i i have created for to showcase the example actually and uh, let's check about other key spaces okay so this is about the key spaces like once your application will load you will see the entire key spaces here okay and uh, this is one sanjay underscore test this is a dummy table i have created for for the example purpose actually okay so once you will select the key space right so in this table section you will see all the tables which is belongs to that particular key space and the same time you can see the selected selected key space name here okay and if i'll select the table name here you can see the table structure here so table structure like the data type of that particular column and what is the column type either it is a partition key and clustering key okay those details you can get here okay so instead of going to left and checking in star uh, uh, partition key clustering key you can directly uh, see before going to do a query here okay so that was the intention for making this application actually okay so once you have selected the table you will see the selected table name here now you can perform the all the operation this is the operation section where you can do all select insert update delete truncate kind of operation you can do here okay suppose i will select the select operation okay and then i will submit i will see no data here okay because there is no record actually okay so this is about like uh, the operations and the submit i will show you that uh, with my uh, dummy key space actually the examples okay so one more thing so suppose if you'll see this primary key sections okay so in this primary key section you can see two keys this both are primary key actually so in cassandra primary key will have two parts one is partition key and one is clustering key correct so while you are querying right while you are doing select query or delete operation or update operation you must need to use this uh, primary key primary key okay and in part primary key partition key it is must actually okay that you need to use while doing this queries okay so that's why this i have impl implemented so that what you know like uh, you don't need to go and check again like what is the partition key and what is the clustering key direct automatically you will uh, select here so suppose if i'll do here if i'll select role so before that i need to select the operation okay suppose i'm doing select operation if i'll do select so see what it is it is saying please check the selection criteria because i I am this role is a clustering key actually okay and resource is a partition key so before uh, first uh, while doing this query I first I need to select the partition key that is the sequence actually once I will select entire partition key then only I need to come to clustering key okay so suppose if I will do resource so directly it will create uh, this for me okay because that is the right sequence if I will do role then the role also will come I got it so that is the reason behind to making this application and this is like a pretty much automated code okay you don't need to do anything and you, you don't need to go and check again about the tuple structure everything automatically it will form uh, the query for you 
okay this is the one of the use cases okay now uh, one more thing i want to add here like uh, suppose there are a lot of people who are novice to cassandra okay what they do oh, they generally uh, they basically uh, they generally what they do like uh, they will do the query with any columns okay uh, they put uh, suppose id name address is there and id and name is your partition and clustering key so what they do they uh, they put phone number as a where clause i'm just giving an example which is not good in cassandra if you're working with 200 nodes of cluster and some number of cluster so what will happen it will uh, it is not good actually it will not work so in that case what will they will do they will start allow filtering they, they will they will use this allow filtering so which is prohibited okay so so advantage of using this application what you can do you can customize your code if somebody using this allow filtering you, you can directly stop them before executing it okay so those uh, implementation also you can do here so this th that i did not uh, implemented it but later i can do actually that thing so this is one thing okay so there are many reason uh, for behind for developing this application so now we will talk about the entire operation okay so let's let's select uh, this uh, key space dummy key space which is sanjay test okay so as you can see there is only one table belongs to this uh, sanjay test key space as soon as i will select this key space uh, table i can see the all the details of the table okay what is the partition key what is the clustering key so there is no part clustering key actually only one uh, partition key okay so now i will do the select operation here and uh, if i do submit so you can see there are two records okay there are two records in this uh, table in employee table 101 and 103 okay suppose i want to do a select query with a where clause okay so there is only one partition key if i'll select it so you can see here like i got this uh, query okay automatically suppose i want 103 data if i'll do this so i will get the 103 records okay so this is about the select operation okay now we will talk about the insert operation so in insert operation we have id address name and phone number suppose i will give something like 104 address is like uh, mumbai and name rama and some random number if i'll insert it so you can see 104 record inserted uh, with the name rama actually okay so this is about insert let's talk about the update so in the update query we must need to use the partition key actually okay partition key or primary key so, but in this table we have only one uh, primary key that is id so that we need to use actually so as soon as you will select you will get this automatic it query where just you need to change the value actually so of the column or uh, of the id okay so here suppose i want to change the address okay uh, from uh, 101 id okay so suppose address i just want to give here address hyderabad for 101 okay file submitted row updated successfully you can see 101 address updated with hyderabad okay let's talk about delete so again for delete also we need to give the uh, primary key okay so as we have uh, one party uh, primary key so then again the same thing so suppose i want to delete this uh, 104 okay so now we have only two records 101 and 103 so this is about like select insert update delete right this is about this uh, operation now we will check about this truncate truncate operation so uh, before uh, once you will select the truncate operation you will see this pop up where it will ask 
Are you sure to delete this table? This action may affect your database or internal database structure. Okay, because it will wipe your entire table content. So that's why. So if I'll do okay, then uh, the truncate employee uh, query will come here, and then just you need to submit. Now there is no record. All record deleted. If you'll do again the select operation, so you will not find anything. Okay, so this is about this uh, operations and this about the primary key, you know, right? Uh, I, I guess you understood about what is that? Why this primary key section is there? Okay, and uh, let's talk about some more future. Uh, suppose uh, there is a t key space stuff. Okay, and I will select this table. Select information. Okay, so now you can see uh, because in this table I am having multiple rows like it's more than 20 30 rows actually. So what will happen you can see some kind of pagination here. Okay, so you can see like uh, if you want to show your uh, if you just want to see only five records you can select the five and you can see this five records here. Okay, in one page and then you can do this uh, pagination. Okay. And again, like uh, there is a like uh, order arrangement is as well uh, also there. You can do in ascending or descending here. For each column, you have those those option actually. Okay. So for 50, because there is only 50 columns, so, and there is a one search key. Suppose I I'm looking for only belay, so you can see only belay records here. Okay, so so this is about the Cassandra Workbench. So I hope you guys like uh, this video and this tool. If you guys want to contribute on my application, you can clone it. Uh, I will give this uh, Git repo link in my YouTube description, and from there you can clone and you can contribute there as well. Okay, and um, yeah, that's it. So we will meet again. Thank you very much.